played his people, why Meghan Markle's lonely walk leaves me feeling sad. After a week with more incredible twists and turns than any plot on EastEnders, Charles has stepped into the breach to escort Meghan up the aisle in the absence of her ailing father. It is a magnanimous and affectionate gesture from our future king, a very public display of how he is welcoming her and to the royal family. Yet it turns out Meghan will begin her walk on her own, in what respected American TV news channel CNN calls a bold feminist statement. Only when she reaches the area known as the choir halfway down the chapel will Charles accompany her. And even then she will not be given away by him in the traditional sense. Charles will stand back as Meghan takes the final few steps to join Harry alone, and gives herself away. She herself came up with this plan which is unprecedented in royal weddings. Even if her father was attending she was still going to make that initial solo walk, and present herself to her groom. Shame on Judy Murray for saying she's chucking out her sleeveless tops after seeing herself on TV with her bingo wings wobbling. Slim and toned at 58, she should wear her firm upper arms with pride. It's only when they flap like the underbelly of an elephant you need to worry. CNN says it indicates that she wishes to assert herself as a strong, independent woman who is prepared to challenge royal norms. Maybe. But no man or woman is an island. We all ideally need to draw from the strength that supportive, loving families can give. That's why I find this lonely walk a little sad. And is a royal wedding attended by the Queen and Prince Philip and watched around the world really the place for her to challenge norms and make a feminist statement? Perhaps it's her determination to appear strong and independent that is behind her refusal to invite any of the extended Markle clan, leaving her mother as the only family member. To be fair, one can understand why Meghan has not invited her ghastly siblings, and she had no control over the sad way her father finally pulled out because of his heart condition. But she has respectable cousins and uncles, why not invite them? Part of the magic of any wedding is the joining of two families. From royal chapel to local church, tradition holds that those families are separated on the right and left side of the aisle, then unite for the celebrations and a combined future together. Of course, I wish the couple every happiness and Meghan is certainly a gloriously welcome breath of fresh air in the often stuffy royal family. But my fear is that she could one day regret casting aside centuries of tradition to make her feminist statement in St. George's Chapel. While the rest of us will remember the ceremony as the day hashtag me to met the Windsors. The super trooper Brosnan's pictured at the Cannes Film Festival with his wife Keely Shea Smith ahead of his starring role in the new Mamma Mia movie. Pierce Brosnan, 65, demonstrates why he has such enduring appeal to women. It's because, unlike many megastars, he hasn't dumped his wife of 17 years for a woman half her size and age. He obviously adores her. As for Mrs. Brosnan, she's clearly never had an eating disorder in her life and is utterly at home in her own skin. Fifteen Leicestershire police officers proudly posed with boots laced with the rainbow colors supporting the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. Why can't they invent laces for cops to show support for those of us with burglar phobia, naked car phobia and stab head phobia? Ola and Anne would be strictly X-rated. Strictly's head judge Shirley Ballas says it would be spectacular to have same-sex dancers on the show. I can't quite get my head around that. Ola Jordan waltzing with Anne Whittacombe? Their combined bosoms mean they would have been on opposite sides of the dance floor. Any churchgoer knows we are asked to dig deep to help good causes. So it is rather disturbing to learn the Church of England's head of investments took home £515,000 from the charity last year. Let's hope Tom Joy is putting 10% of his earnings, that's £51,500, Tom, in the collection as we humble parishioners are asked to. Loved the trip down memory lane with the male's reproductions of the past royal weddings. Yet, apart from the Queen, and Queen Mum, most ended in adultery and divorce. Princess Margaret, Princess Anne, Prince Charles, and Prince Andrew. The headline on Diana's wedding was perfect, not for long it wasn't. Having seen the latest parade of wags ahead of the World Cup, I'm suddenly full of nostalgia for the halcyon days when footballers' wives and girlfriends were, well, more colorful. Where is our posh with her orange? cannonball breasts. Where is our permit and Colleen Rooney on constant speed dial to hubby Wayne to check on his whereabouts? Wags just ain't playing the game anymore. Westminster Wars. Archie Eurofile and Treasury Chief Secretary Liz Truss turned up for a crisis Brexit meeting wearing a dress almost split to her knickers. Yes, dear, austerity has hit us all, but surely you could afford a frock that covered your underwear. Strictly star Anton Dubeck longs for Boris Johnson to join the celebrity version of the show but fears no amount of sequins and lycra could tidy him up. He looks like an unmade bed. That has always been part of Boris's appeal. Just ask his mistresses. The tributes to Tessa Joel were rightly effusive. What I remember most was the laughter in her eyes. She wore her many political achievements so lightly. Labor spin Dr. Alistair Campbell called her one of the nicest, most compassionate and empathetic people I ever met. It's the only thing he's ever said that I agree with. Learn from Jerry. Millionaire TV chef Heston Blumenthal, 51, surprised his girlfriend and mother of his fourth child with an impromptu wedding on a beach in the Maldives.
hotel bosses found a local official to conduct the nuptials, and Stephanie Gouveia, 31, was thrilled. That's probably how Jerry Hall felt, too, when she married Mick Jagger on the beach in Bali, only to discover during their divorce proceedings the marriage was declared void ab initio, which, very loosely translated, means you are not entitled to a penny, baby. Having won the Golden Boot for scoring the most goals in one season, Liverpool striker Mohamed Salah's iridescent turquoise football boots are now resting at the feet of an ancient pharaoh in the British Museum. Evidently Egyptian-born Salah is considered a modern Egyptian icon. Somehow I doubt we'll still remember him in 3,000 years. Hugh Grant has received rave reviews for his portrayal of disgraced former Liberal leader Jeremy Thorpe in the BBC's A Very English Scandal. He says he's now too old and ugly to play romantic movie leads. So is eyeing up interesting new TV projects. Given the BBC's penchant for dramas featuring tortured individuals, they should sign him up to play his friend, the notorious fetishist Max Mosley, in a production of Four Hookers and an Orgy. It is impossible to understand why three serious claims of bullying made by senior Commons officials against Speaker Burkow have been dropped. Parliament says events that took place longer than seven years ago can't be investigated. There is no time limit on charges of historic sex abuse. Just ask Sir Cliff Richard, falsely accused of abuse at an event in 1985, nor on the persecution of British troops in Northern Ireland, now being hounded decades after the troubles ended. For years LaToya Jackson criticized her brother Michael's obsession with cosmetic surgery, while denying having any work done on her own face. Now pictures show she's got his same ski slope nose and peculiarly pale skin. I guess it's in the Jackson jeans. Perhaps her next album will be called Filler.